Welcome to Business Talk, a weekly University of Rio Grande, Ohio State University South Center's podcast show. We are here at the University of Rio Grande TV studio. Not only are we doing live internet radio through Blog Talk Radio, but we're also live on the Jackson Educational Access ch Channel and Channel 17 University of Rio Grande TV. Our podcasts are archived and placed on YouTube for viewing and listening again. Our mission is simple to promote the University of Rio Grande and its diverse educational programs, promote the Ohio State University South Centers and its many business technology programs, promote the various, the various small businesses and economic support organizations, and finally promote Southern Ohio, a great place to live, learn, and enjoy life to the fullest. Our co-hosts are Jason Winters, Director of the Center for Small Business Entrepreneurship, Mike Thompson, Instructional Design and Media Services Director, both with, you, with the University of Rio Grande, we also have Patrick Dangle, Business Development Specialist, and Kimberly Rausch, Program Assistant, both with the Ohio State University of South Centers. And myself, Nate Walzer, MBA student with the University of Rio Grande. This week, we feature Michelle Miller, owner and creator of the Gallia Hometown Herald. What's going on, Michelle? Nothing. <laughs> How are you? Good. You Good. should know what's going on. You do the news. I'm not psychic. That is the first thing that people have. News reporter does not mean psychic. <laughs> no, it's a been a busy week because we've had a lot of preliminary hearings and court cases to cover so well to start us off would you like to tell us a little bit about yourself um i live in rio grande um i started the guy hometown herald in october as a mba project <laughs> 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 and she got too big time, so she stopped doing the MBA yeah, program well, and decided got, to go on her own little business venture. Yeah, it got busy. Um, so I have some background in news reporting, and uh, that's what started it, basically. Have you been doing like news your whole life? Started in high school with the high school newspaper mm -hmm. and just passionate about it ever since? Well, yeah, and I, um, my whole dream at one point was to be a news reporter, and then somewhere I got, um, I guess disappointed with the way news was the whole how do you feel thing I didn't like it so I kind of went away from it and then came back to it and um, actually I found an ink pen that somebody gave me in high school that I wasn't allowed to use it till I was a news reporter the best news reporter was a friend of mine um, so there was a point where I was going to go to OU and be a journalist. So and that's the only reason you started it, just so you could use the pen. So then. I could use the pen. <laughs> I still haven't gotten to the point that I can use the pen, though. <laughs> so what is it that you do, and where can people find it? Um, www.gallahometownherald.com. Um, I'm an online news site, paper. You know, I don't have a printed edition, so it's kind of confusing to some people. Some people call it a newspaper. Some people call it a news site. Um, it's completely online, you can follow it on Facebook. And basically, I just, I do what most local newspapers do. I cover stories that are going on, whether it's a event or a court case. Well, to start us off, can you tell us the difference between a newsletter and an online newspaper? Um, a newsletter is usually specific to a certain organization or group. Um, really, what I do is absolutely no different than what you find in a printed edition, it's just online instead of in a printed copy. Um, it's just like the studio. Mm -hmm. It's actually, you know, designed like a radio studio, but we have no tower. And it goes out to a uh, local access channel instead mm -hmm. of broadcast. Right. And we're online and different things like that. So same thing. You do the same thing behind the scenes, but the outlet is a little different. Right. So, Michelle, I'll, I'll start off. You mentioned that uh, you were a part of our MBA program. Uh, started oh, you just out. You rub it in, don't you? Oh, I, you know, <laughs> when, when Pat told me Michelle was coming on the show, I said, you know, this is a great opportunity to highlight one of our best dropouts. <laughs> <laughs> and, and hey, hey, Bill I Gates say that, dropped out of I Harvard. I say that with all due respect because, you know, when, on, in all honesty, Pat, when she mentioned uh, starting the program over a year ago, she said, I've got this great idea. You know, I, I really I was a part of the newspaper industry. I see the newspaper industry shifting, and I really see an online version of a newspaper, especially hometown, uh, going well in our area. I said, well, then it sounds like you have your project for your MBA. <laughs> so she came in with this idea. She made it through the first semester, and she said, I'm working more hours than there are in a day. And so she ended up dropping out and going full time. Why don't you tell us a little bit, and this talks about all entrepreneurs 
the idea of you're going to become your own boss and you're going to work 40 hours a week. And you can take <laughs> yeah. off anytime you want. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the schedule is yours. There is no sick time. There is no overtime. There are no days off. I haven't had it. I have not had a day off since October 22nd <laughs> um, when I started. Um, you know, when you are, especially a small business owner, you live and breathe it the business whether or not you have a brick and mortar you know an actual location where you may only be open from eight to five but i guarantee that that business owner is doing other things after five um so it's really no different except you know and you can make good money being a business owner but people don't take into the consideration that you might spend seven days a week 18 hours a day doing that um job and that's that's about you know what I do I mean there are a lot of days that I put in 18 hours a day for several weeks straight and then my my day off is an eight-hour day <laughs> <laughs> so um, but it's still very rewarding like I would rather do something I love 18 hours a day than something that I'm okay with for eight and I love what I'm doing so but Michelle you're also a mom how do you juggle work life and family life I have awesome children um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I do I mean it gets stressful, uh, especially, you know, my husband, he helps when he can, but, you know, he works too, and opposite shifts. So there's a lot of juggling. There's a lot of me stopping mid what I'm doing to go fix the boo-boo or, you know, <laughs> um, making time. And I just have to, you know, the kids understand that this is my work and that, you know, it'll get better. There's really not, people say, well, you can make your own schedule. That, no. And the news thing, the, the news makes my schedule for me. So it just, it's a, it's, a, it's a juggling act. Well, nothing happens after 6 p.m., right? <laughs> right. Yeah, nothing, <laughs> ever. And, you know, I'll wake up in the morning and go, I have nothing to write today. And by 4 o'clock, I have seven stories I'm sitting on trying to get done. You know, so that my, my kids are older, and they're a big help to me. So. so when you have, when you wake up and you're like, oh, man, what am I going to write about? How do you go out and find the things to write about? Do people come to you? Do you go to, do you use Facebook to find hang things? Out McDonald's yeah, hang, hang out at McDonald's. Hang out at McDonald's. Sometimes uh, people will come to me, or I'll get a news release of something that happened. I'll go through, you know, I'll get the 911 reports, go through those to see if anything big happened. So you just sit on the scanner and listen to what's going on? No, but um, that is how most media outlets find out what's going on. I don't have an extra person to sit on the scanner. So every <laughs> once in a while, I'll catch something. But I, have, I actually have the scanner downloaded to my cell phone so that I can listen to it, you know. And now I don't report off the scanner, which has become the newest big thing to do for media. Um, so I, is there literally an app for that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, if you want to, you can listen to the scanner for Chicago, mm -hmm. New York, Gallia County, whatever you, whichever one you want to do. Because they take the radio signal and then pipe it online. Wow, my grandmother would have loved that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I have certain, I have people on Facebook that do listen to the scanner all day. So every once in a while, I'll browse through Facebook and see if anybody said, ooh, something's happening on First Avenue. Well, so and your call. husband is kind of plugged into that too, right? Yeah, but we, with, it's hard because where I'm a reporter and he works for 911, we try to keep it. It's not really confidential, but I keep that separate so that if it is something that's not supposed to be released or I don't ask him and he doesn't tell me. Okay. Um, because... I thought maybe that was a good fit. It, I mean, you know, on the fire department, if he gets a fire, you know, on occasion, I throw him the camera and say, take a picture, you yeah. know. Um, <laughs> Tell but, him about it when you get home. Yeah, but because, you know, he, he is in the emergency field, um, so it does make it rough being a news reporter and being married to somebody who's in the emergency field because those things that I might go cover, he's on. Mm -hmm. And I can't really take the kids, depending on the situation, on what it is sure um well why don't you just let him write about it you he can hand you the copy oh no, yeah he's like no not so much <laughs> <laughs> but i mean it it just depends i mean news happens as it happens so why did you start doing this what were the deficiencies or you know what um i think it was basically just for me i mean i liked owning my own business i did it once before um I like working for myself. What, what business did you own before? I had a video store. Mm -hmm. 
in Rio. So um, I loved every, that was probably out of everything I've ever done, that was where I was the happiest. And I had, you know, the training in news writing, I had the connections, because connections are a big deal. I mean, it took me six months to get to where people could tr knew that they could trust me, that I wasn't gonna burn them just to burn them, that I could get information. So I already had those in place. Um, and it just became one of the, why am I just not doing it? I mean, I needed it for a project. I needed a project to do. And it went from a project to why am I just not doing it? So that, honestly, I think I made that decision in, what, a month and a half. I went, okay, I'm starting an online news site in a month and a half and quitting my job. <laughs> so. So I guess the next pr question would be for people. It's like, okay, so you write news and you put it on a website. Where's the money come in? advertising just and like a regular newspaper yeah and and you know newspapers can charge for their their newspaper because somebody has it in their hand they're buying something now, yours is free information right but you know online if you try to charge it's an automatic let's go somewhere else right i mean they think that it should be free because it's online mm -hmm. um so there's a little bit of an in-between there that, you know, radio, they don't charge people to listen to radio. WSAZ or whoever does not charge somebody to listen. And so, Facebook doesn't charge to right, do their thing. Yet. Um, but <laughs> so there is like a shift there because you're kind of stuck right now in between now with Facebook and social media and stuff, businesses don't think they have to advertise. So... You know, where the news sites are going to go, I don't know in the future. Because, like, with DVRs now, I mean, how many people now actually watch ads on television? You know, most of the time they go right through the ads. So, I'm not quite sure. I think that you're going to see a big shift, and I don't know where that shift is going to go in, in online radio, you know. Well, a lot of it, the stuff that I see like with Facebook or Google is target marketing mm -hmm. you know they see what your browsing habits are and then you know they'll take they can see that you know maybe you've been looking at Buicks and then within those little advertising parts of other sites that you go to they say hey here's a new Buick you know except people too though don't as a general rule and, I, and that shift is I don't think that's ever going to change People do not click on links that they that they are not familiar with, right. um, and that's what I tell people. Like when they advertise on on my site, you know, make sure that you have your web address there. And if you don't see any clicks from my site, that does not necessarily mean that people aren't going to your site. Um, people, as a general rule, do not click links unless they know what that business is. Now, on my end, it's where it's local and it's mostly they know that there's and a high valley bank or a, you know they know that's a legitimate place right um but like i don't if i see it you ad don't have that commercials for me, viagra and all that kind right, of stuff no <laughs> 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 not yet but you never know <laughs> but you know it's um i don't click on links i mean i copy the address and mm -hmm. then i will go to that website separate and i just you know so i think there's just a big shift in how advertising is handled mm-hmm Pat handed me a little memo here a little bit ago, and, and he wanted you to discuss a little bit about being a, a, a woman-owned business, and also he wanted to know if there's any grants out there that help you <laughs> get started. I have been told that there are no grants for businesses. <laughs> um, as far as being a woman-owned business, I don't know if there's a difference because I've, you know, I mean, I've never run into any issues because I'm a woman. I've never had um, any problems you know, I just, I don't know that if there is a difference. I've never had problems in gaining respect with people if, if I deserve it. Um, I think in that business, I think it's a pretty level playing field. Yeah. It's yeah. not like you're trying to put mufflers on cars or something. Yeah. Not that you couldn't do I that. I was going to say, well. <laughs> but I mean, you yeah. know, what people might think when they roll into a, an auto right uh, repair place yeah there's no real um i do think that a lot of times that people think because you get that feeling versus the hard news and soft news that and i don't think it's so much in my business aspect as it is you know other people who know me think that i'm going to be more about the flowers and the 
than I am the court cases. Mm -hmm. There is kind of that thing. Um, but after they get to know me for a little while, they realize that I'm not easily walked on. So, <laughs> but I just, I don't know that there's a difference for me. Have you done much with the, like Google Analytics or whatever to see who's coming and how long they stay or what they click on? Yeah, I, I check Google Analytics about, well, I have to. I originally had just my web, the GoDaddy, the, my website analytics, and I wasn't sure how that was comparing, so I went to Google, too, and added it so that I could go between the two. Um, and there are some discrepancies, but I'd say I'm on my analytics. As soon as I upload stories, I immediately go to the um, live to see who's hitting, how fast they're hitting, where they're hitting from, um, and that, and I'm constantly monitoring that. And that's the good thing about having an online news site. Like if I had just had a newspaper, you know, a regular newspaper, I had subscriptions. I can't tell you what people even, are reading. Even if you were broadcast TV. Yeah. You don't I, know whether the person's in the bathroom or if they're sitting in front of their thing or, or the dog's watching. Or it, what they're reading or what, right. they're, what they're interested in. But with mine, where I load to Facebook too, people a lot of times will click the specific stories. And I can range like by... 600 hits depending on what stories that I have I know how many times somebody's read the court story versus this other story so, so. the Google Analytics shows you exactly who's seeing what and how many views it has well it's not it's not who necessarily it just shows that people are actually watching it so it's not like you see Joe Smith or whoever out there is like oh he's been looking at this yeah that's not just so people don't get freaked out that you're right, I can't looking see over their the name, shoulder. But like with my with my GoDaddy one, like through my website, I can see what pages are viewed, where they went through, and I can do that with Google Analytics. So this too. is also good to market to, for advertisers as well. Because right. you can say, look, I have this many people on my site that are looking at this. Maybe your business would be beneficial. Right. And that's and how radio people sell their, their services. That We have this share of the market. We have these demographics, you know, people from 25 to 42 watch this channel. So if your business is m targeting that, we're a good fit. Mm -hmm. And we hit a lot of those in these areas. And you do the same thing yeah. with this. So what's the challenges of starting up a news site? Um, time. I mean, I don't think people realize how much time I put, you know, goes into to doing a news site. Um, any story, like for instance, and in, you know, today, I sat for four and a half hours, four hours in a courtroom, and that was for two stories that I'm going to have to write still tonight. So, so the, um, you know, it, that's been the hardest thing is just finding time, finding time to to be a writer, finding time to sell ads, finding time to do the book work, finding time, you know, to invoice for ads. So just basically it's just time. As far as hurdles, there really aren't a lot. Um, I thought maybe gaining readership. It, it is. It, it just depends on how you do it. Like I honestly didn't think it was going to take off as far as fast as it did, but I thought by now I would have more readers. So it took off really quick out of the gate, and then now, you know, I'm kind of at a, which the I have, plateau, like, yeah, of. I have like 1,100 and some Facebook friends, which, you know, to a lot of people is good because I kind of relied on social media, but now I'm looking at other avenues of getting my, the name out, my name out, because I was like, well, I don't need to do this, and because I'll just do social media, which is great, but people don't really share stuff unless it pertains to them. And if I did like a Facebook ad, which I've done a couple times, and it, it's okay, there's 6,000 some potential people in 20 miles of the 45631 area code. Mm -hmm. So I only have 1,100 out of those 6,000 in seven months. So, so that's not really. So those 6,000 are also looking at other, like they're actually reading the newspaper, they're doing other things. Right. How do you gain their interest and let them know that? you want to start looking online you want to come to my site well and that's what i'm looking at i'm looking at different like mailings i don't if i could advertise somewhere i would but normally media you can't advertise other media you can't advertise media. for your newspaper <laughs> in another newspaper right they, they frown on that and they'll usually <laughs> say no so you know i have to look at other avenues 
to do that. Um, so I'm currently looking at that now. But once I've got them, I seem to keep them. It's just getting them. Do you have any relationships with, let's say, uh, radio media mm -hmm. to where you can share stories, uh, work together with them to produce stories? Um, Sunny 93, um, I, I started out with them, and they have been really good about, you know, they'll pull stories off my site if I have something, and the, they'll credit me, um, you know, which is good. So that has helped out some when I have stories. I mean, I only cover Gallia County, and I know I could branch out to other, but there's just no way for me to do that right now. So if there's nothing happening, there's nothing happening, you know. I mean, so I might go a week where I have very little hard news, um, and my readership goes when that yeah. happens. But you know, it's just they're been very good about, and I listen to it on you know when I know I have a big story and see. But they're good about that. So how many uh, other writers do you have working with you? Um, right now, I, I have uh, Kevin Kelly. He does some freelance for me. Um, and then I hired part-time a couple months ago, and she, Stephanie Carroll's her name, love her, she's awesome. Um, she basically uploads for me submitted material because I get so much of that. I mean, I can get 20 a day, um, but on occasion she'll write some articles for me. So she, she works part-time, but other than that, it's me. What do you mean by submitted material? Um, Basically, it's when an organization submits things to me. Uh, anytime you see submitted, I did not write it. Nobody that works for me wrote it. <laughs> it's uh, given to me because there is no way, even with a full staff, there is no way for me to cover every organization, every meeting. Sure. You know, I have to cover the things that nobody else will. I'm the one who sits in a tort trial for two days and makes a story out of it or a commissioner's meeting or a commissioner's or meeting from eight in the morning until four in the afternoon and then i sometimes have something out of it or i don't you know um i'm the person who does that so it, it's up to the community to submit and they can submit anything whether it's minutes from their meeting to they had gave this award to somebody you know, with submitted stuff, is it like them submitting an idea or you actually welcome them to write a little article to submit to you to put on your website? Write, please. <laughs> <laughs> so I beg you to write. Nate, Nate is seriously interested. Yeah. <laughs> Nate's seriously interested in writing an advice to the Lovelorn column. Okay, that'll so, work. <laughs> I'd love to. Okay. <laughs> but and bullet points honestly don't bother me. There's people who say, well, I can't write. Well, give me the points. So that I, I mean, it ta it'll take, it won't take me as long to turn it into an article from the point you gave me as it will to go to your meeting and sit for two hours yeah. and do it myself, you know, give me the bullet points, give me what happened and I'll turn it into something. So, I don't know. <laughs> so we're looking at the clock. <laughs> no, I, was, I was just looking at the uh, people who've logged on and off or on the blog talk side of it. So you're drawing a crowd today on Blog Talk Radio. Well, good. I like that. <laughs> you're not going to come visit your online website later? Or your newspaper? Yeah, either way. I mean, I'm just, I kind of go. Did you do the design? Thing. Yes, which was quite fun, I have to tell you. I learned that from, I had never designed a website before when I went into this. Um, and I'm fairly quick on learning things. So my first website was not that good. I mean, it was pretty bad, to be honest. And everybody was yelling at me, well, you need to do it. I was like, I will. I needed to know. I didn't, I didn't really have another news site to look at. There aren't that many. So I didn't have another news site to look at to get an idea of how, because everything I do goes on. It's not just top stories. or. Um, so the so like first, the Gal Police Tribune yeah. filters, I think, what they allow online, unless I yeah. think you pay for access or right. something you know so I had to look so basically what I did for the first month is I just played you know I kind of went and I figured out what I needed figured out you know what people liked what they didn't the problems with because I have a lot of people who view it on their phone the pro problems is with there phones. a different mobile side of it not with that I switched to GoDaddy and I keep plugging them but I did I switched to GoDaddy because with them it automatically sizes Okay. So when they go on and they hit that story, if they blow it up, it automatically sizes to their screen. So that works out great. I don't have to do a mobile app, which would be nice at some point, mm -hmm. but I don't have to have a mobile page and app. How do people get a hold of you? Um, emails preferred, which is on my contact site. It's gallaheraldnews at gmail.com. 
GaiaHeraldNews at gmail.com. <laughs> Um, and they can text me or call me on my cell phone, which is also on the, the site, which is, um, I forgot my site, <laughs> GaiaHometownHerald.com, um, and I have comment boxes. So there's several ways to contact me, but because I am often in meetings and the best play, way to do it is by email, at least for the initial contact. Okay, so besides having news stories on there to draw people and you making your money with advertising, what are the charges or uh, if somebody went to advertise on your site um, what's the, the deal with that the basic is a hundred dollars per month or two hundred and fifty dollars for three months um, and they're like three and a half by two and they link to your website Facebook page whatever and they can be changed like once a week um, I can do bigger smaller that just kind of depends on what page it's on and you know I work packages out with people but that the the hundred dollars a month is the basic and and i'll do you know smaller times but really honestly with with new sites your best bet is to go for at least a month because you know you may have a slow week or something right i might have a slow week on news and i can't help that i'm not going to make it up so you don't go out and yeah <laughs> i'm not going to make up news so you know it, it, it helps you could have you it might i mean you, you could have an onion part of it. <laughs> yeah, well, that's true. <laughs> Fake news. <laughs> Fake news. No, because people would, go, uh, that would just be bad. But, <laughs> but um, you know, and, and it takes time. It takes people three, four, or five times to go on to go, oh, what is that that I saw? You know, they may not see it the first three or four times they go on. Right. So is your advertising uh, tracked by analytics as well? The, the pages are. Now, if somebody does a full page ad, which I'm kind of playing with now, where they can link straight, say they want to put a menu up or a sales sheet, I'm playing with that now. But I can't really, I can't, I can tell you how many times that page was viewed. I can't tell you how many times your ad was clicked on. You know, you can on your website analytics that you can tell that you're coming from me. But, you know, I can't really tell you. But I can tell you that, say, the home page had... 30,000 views mm -hmm. this month um, so it's just not do you do obituaries yes they're free um, they have to be though be able to be confirmed through a um, funeral home and that's just because people think it's funny to put in fake obituaries and then you get sued so yeah. <laughs> they have to and, I'm, and that, that's happened so I have to you, you have put up a fake one no I haven't I'm, it just has happened in the past so okay. coming it, from the industry yes it yeah. has happened so I have to bear it has to be verifiable either come from a funeral home or verified through a funeral home. on the paper side or the funeral home side on the you paper say side. It, paper side. okay and what they someone will submit it and they'll they'll submit it on and they reference your funeral home and then people are calling and then that person sues because you just told every the whole entire you know county that they were dead yeah and families freak out and they come rushing and so it has happened so just um and because i don't have a brick and mortar i can't i can't say bring in the death certificate um so i ha it has to go through a funeral home or at least be verified through a funeral home but it's free to put up mm -hmm. i don't charge for obituaries We've got about, what, 90 seconds left? Would you want to put up, like, uh, funeral notice notices for pets? Yes, I would. <laughs> <laughs> Since you're into the same so, thing. So now I have I to have start writing pet obituaries. I have, a pets, yeah. I have a pets page that I'm starting. So oh, just, like, pictures and stuff? I'm trying. Yeah, I'm getting it. Um, I want to do funny, like, funny things, but then have rescue animals that need to homes and stuff like that. So. Yeah. That's something, personally, I wouldn't mind seeing is uh the uh Gallia county animal shelter and who right. who's there and what you can you know expect well and there. i've offered that up and that's the biggest thing that it's hard to get out to community i know that they're busy too but you know i can't keep track of everybody okay we have about 40 seconds left is there any uh mention your website how to mm -hmm. get hold of you again um galliahometownherald.com uh you can email me at News at gmail Dot com was that right anyway it's yeah. on the contact uh, page and uh, just submit please I mean interesting stories I don't care if you had somebody somebody just submitted a huge long backstory of their parents who met 70 years ago and are celebrating their 70th anniversary just a, a good just a biography of how they met and, and yeah, I just feel good neat. story yeah
Okay. Well, thanks for coming in. Thank you very much for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah, it's always nice to have some of my dropout <laughs> students come back <laughs> and join you had to us. get that in there again. Absolutely. At least one more time. <laughs> uh, next week on Blog Talk, this week we have a um, SIFE on campus. They are doing a uh, two week long camp to where they are teaching students uh, free enterprise here on campus. Uh, they're receiving college credit for that. And next week we have a couple students that will be joining us. Uh, these are high school students that are here on campus. So uh, I think that'll be very interesting. So we look forward to that next week. Uh, I'm Jason. I'm Nate. I'm Mike. Pat's behind the scenes. And, and I'm Michelle. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Thank you. <laughs>